The Pickleball Show is brought to you by PBX Club. PBX stands for Pickleball Excellence. Join today and get the latest pickleball tips and strategies, news, and opinion. Save money on paddles and other equipment with coupon codes to online pickleball retailers. Get travel discounts to tournaments and a whole lot more. How much does it cost to become a PBX Club member? Well, it's free. Just go to freepbxclub.com. That's freepbxclub.com. There's even a link in the show notes for this episode. Free PBX Club. Dot com. PBX Pickleball Excellence. Join the club. It's free. This is Prem Carno, author of Smart Pickleball, and here's the host of the Pickleball Show, Chris Allen. Thank you, Prem, and welcome to the show dedicated to helping you play better pickleball while having even more fun and meeting new friends who share your passion for this great sport. My name is Chris Allen. I'm your host, joining you today from Asheville, North Carolina. And let's walk on over and see whose paddles are in the fence today. From somewhere in Arizona. Surprise! It's I think it's Surprise, Arizona. It's Melissa McCurley from PickleballTournaments.com. Hey, Melissa. Hello, Chris. How are you? Doing great. And from Virginia, Greg Thompson. Hey, Greg. Hey, Chris. How's it going? <laughs> good. So good to talk to you both. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. Hope you had a great holiday season. It was fantastic. Thank you. Hope you did too. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. But now I'm ready to look forward. Look on the calendar here. 2016. We've we've torn that uh, December 2015 page off the calendar. And now we're into 2016. And there's a whole new slew of tournaments on the calendar. So I wanted to talk to the two experts here and see what the whole tournament landscape looked like for 2016. Are you seeing, uh, in general, more tournaments, a lot more tournaments this year than there were last year and the year before, Melissa? Yeah, I, well, what we're seeing is there's people planning earlier uh, than ever before and getting their tournaments out there listed and on the calendar uh, because getting that date um, in which you're not conflicting with someone else who's running an established tournament that's well attended is getting harder and harder to do. You've got to plant uh, your flag that much earlier to make sure that uh, that weekend is yours. Absolutely. Uh, so 2015, and you know, this is large tournaments that we are focused on, saw 130 uh, large ones, which was up from 93 tournaments the year before. And sitting here on January the 2nd, uh, we have just over 80 large tournaments listed, and we're not even well into 2016 yet. If we see the same pattern we've seen over the last four years, we've seen a 40% increase in the number of large tournaments that are being put on uh, over those last four years. We could expect to see that again this year. I think as more and more people just feel this need to feed their competitive souls and get out there and compete. Uh, there's also more and more people coming into the game. There's also more and more courts uh, being added for people to play. And one of the things that people like to do once they have their courts established is to have some sort of uh, competitive event to get exposure to their club, get exposure to their courts. And also it's a good way for clubs and organizations to raise money. And plus, it's just fun to, to just, you know, when you build something, you want to see how it looks when you blow it up. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know that uh, there's a lot of parks and recreations that are really starting to pay attention to pickleball. And we're seeing here in Arizona more courts uh, go up that are available to public use. Eight new ones just opened in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, just a few weeks ago and then earlier this summer there were four opened in north phoenix and so the number of places to play the number of people that we see coming into the game is growing at a more rapid rate than i've ever seen uh, in the last couple of years that i've been involved full time um, you know going out to the pickleball courts it's now not unusual at all to see of eight courts five courts of people that are brand new to the game you've never seen before so that's very exciting for this sport you know we talk all the time that you can show Show up at the courts, bring your paddle uh, as a solo person coming up and be able to get in and have a lot of fun playing with people. There's not really any other sport that I know of that really allows you to do that and to be able to pick it up so quickly. So it's an exciting time of year. It's an exciting time of year for tournaments. And one thing that I have heard two Chris tournaments doing is trying to get people into the tournament scene in a way that they don't feel intimidated and can gain some confidence coming into the tournament. And some of those are now putting on just your two five type event 
where people can come in, compete at that beginner type level, not feel intimidated and kind of get their tournament feet under them and look to come back as they and their skill advance. I think that's key because you don't want to just have the, you know, lead the lambs to the slaughter <laughs> all the right, time right. because they're not going to come back. And so uh, that's uh, that that really is important. And uh, part of the, the growth and the success of all these tournaments, a lot of that is due to the two of you and the hard work that you guys have put in and the incredible software that you guys have at pickleballtournaments.com that make these things run like clockwork. I don't think that that can be overlooked because there wouldn't be this kind of growth if it wasn't something that uh, people enjoyed, not just participating in, but putting on as well. And I think that you guys at pickleballtournaments.com have made that happen on the administrative end where it's okay. You know what? It's okay. It's going to be okay. I can put on a tournament and it'll run smoothly. I'm not afraid of this. I can do it because I've got Melissa and Greg in my corner. So kudos to both of you. Uh, well, we always. Uh, you know, have... th thanks a lot, for Chris. Uh, you know, this last year, Melissa and I both went to a bunch of tournaments, and it was eye-opening. And so, we're gonna try to get out there and do like training for tournament directors that show like the pitfalls that we saw over the last year. That way, you know, they they won't experience that themselves. And Melissa's working on uh, training now that we're gonna actually get out there, and and uh, hopefully we can provide that to the tournament director to. They can take a look at it and, you know, have some information prior to the tournament. That sounds great. Yeah, that's a great idea to have that. You know, it's the old, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. So you guys have seen the history. You can save them all the headaches and the pitfalls because you've seen them before. And so you can say, nope, you know what? We've tried that before. That didn't work. Let's do it this way. This is the way that works. And uh, feel free to use our format that we used on the original Pickleball show with you guys guys, the good tournament director does this and the bad tournament director does this. Kind of like, uh, you know, the bad tournament director hangs out at the taco truck with a beer like Greg and <laughs> Melissa's mom does. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say we might not be able to hit on all topics, but yeah, that that definitely one. Don't hang out at the taco truck. <laughs> That's from a previous episode. For for anybody who hadn't listened to it, uh, Melissa <laughs> told a funny story about her mom at uh, I think it was in South Carolina at the Low Country tournament, taking a little uh, unscheduled break. Now, what uh, what is different in the 2016 major tournament landscape? The what's different than the 2015? tournament landscape, Melissa? Well, I think um, in cases like we have a tournament coming up that was known as the Surprise Pickleball Association Tournament Number 2 here in Surprise, Arizona, that is now being called the Tommy Wong Memorial Tournament in honor of Tommy Wong, who is Steve Wong's brother, uh, who uh, passed away much too soon. And Steve and Tommy both were uh, the people that were instrumental coming in and starting pickleball here in Surprise and getting uh, the old tennis courts at the park converted to permanent courts. And Tommy was just a treat um, and a pleasure and warming, welcoming, you know, a smile on his face, always cutting up kind of guy. So that's something new coming in this year, honoring Tommy. And uh, there'll be a reception type thing for him uh, going into that tournament. So very excited about that. That sounds good and a great positive way to acknowledge the contribution that he made and uh, a, a great way to honor him. Nice job. Absolutely. So, and, you know, kudos to Jeff Stone and his entire team that uh, Jeff's the president of the Surprise Pickleball Association and then uh, his vice president, Marlene, Debbie uh, Javay. There's Sharon Navratrill. So the board there uh, really came through and, and I think um, put on a good tournament. They, they We saw this too for the first time, so I should mention it for the Tommy Wong tournament so that we could bring in as many participants as we possibly could. We are using eight of the pickleball courts, the permanent courts there in the park. And then we're also going to tape off eight courts at the tennis center in surprise to have a total of 16 courts for the tournament. And that is a, a big step for the city of surprise and the tennis facility, letting the pickleball come in and uh, use those courts. Nice. That's great that it worked out that way. 
Yeah. The other thing uh, that we're seeing, the uh, we have right behind the Tommy Wong, it's the U- USAPA Southwest Regional Tournament. When we held that tournament last year, we did it uh, in mid-December, and participation was around 150 players. We've moved that tournament into the holiday weekend in January, and we have 450 players that are going to be playing in that tournament. Wow. And Whose idea was it to move it? Um, it was Linda Hogett, who is the district ambassador for the Southwest. I think Linda should director. get the uh, Linda should get the good parking space at the tournament and <laughs> the reserve parking space, and also maybe a little something extra out of the petty cash drawer. Yeah, she's doing a fantastic job. She's she's doing some creative things uh, as well with her tournament. She has uh, uh, negotiated with the Coyotes, which is the professional ice hockey team here in the Phoenix area, uh, to have a um, a pickleball you know type night to where we get to come in and watch the Coyotes play at uh, discounted ticket type rates, and then afterwards we get to go down and have our picture taken on the ice. Oh, neat! So it'll be uh, I guess you could call it pickleball. <laughs> I guess you. <laughs> Maybe we should just no, get the no, net out no. there, and we should don't see laugh. how well just we can don't play. Laugh at that. Please, please, don't laugh at that. No, that, no, no, no patronizing or no. Pu- 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 you really went with pickleball, Chris. I thought better. Of you. No, I, I thought know. better of you. I, I respected the you. Puns are James the- Brown thing. Pucklebaw. Yeah, Pucklebaw. Puns are the lowest form of humor. They really are. <laughs> the lowest. They are in the like, gutter. That's, that's, that's just. Yeah, that's, uh, I know. That's dumpster diving. I'm going to put myself in the penalty box right now. <laughs> I'm going to take a time. Melissa is so kind and like, you know, giving. <laughs> well, because that made me laugh and I thought, well, hey, well, let's take it another step further and let's actually try to play. Let's get a net, put it out there on the ice and let's see how well we play pickleball on the uh on the oh, ice. that would be wild, yeah, uh, sliding around on the ice, because the surface it would be hard enough, you'd get some pretty good bounce on the ball, but it would be you sliding around on the uh, on the ice that would be interesting. Well, we'll just put skates on, see, and, oh, and play God. in skates. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then that, but that would raise you up so high, and then you'd have to reach down, you need a telescoping handle on your paddle to get to the, <laughs> get to those dinks and get to those low balls. Absolutely. Here on the East Coast, everybody's talking about, coming up in April, the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. I know that's something new on the major tournament scene. What's the uh, what's the buzz been like for you out, out on the West Coast there, Melissa, for the U.S. Open? Uh, a lot of people are very excited about the U.S. Open. Um, they're also very uh, inquisitive about the U.S. Open as well. I think there are people who jumped all in and said, you know, for the love of pickleball, I want to be part of the U.S. Open. And then I think there are others that are still on the fence wondering if they're going to be a part or not. It's certainly something that we have not seen anything uh, else like, including you know the national type tournaments that we have seen out there. Uh, it's going to be a event type environment that the organizers are trying to put together. It's also going to have a little bit of something for everyone. It's going to have pro event uh, in which you have to qualify to play in the pro division, and if you do not win in the qualifier, then you get to play in a 5-0 double elimination skill bracket. If you do win the qualifier round, then you go on to play in a consolation bracket for uh, prize money. And ultimately, the person holding that first U.S. Open pickleball title as the champion. And it's truly uh, an historic time for the game. Uh, so they're also offering age events, they're offering skill events, they're offering singles, doubles uh, for the first time. To our knowledge, there'll also be a, a tournament of this caliber offering a wheelchair division. They've got uh, beer gardens and entertainment. They're bringing in championship court Uh, venues. They're going to have nightly and daily entertainment. It's just going to be an event, not just a tournament, if you will, where it'll really bring a lot of good exposure to the game uh, and also to the city of Naples where it's being hosted. And the city of Naples uh, has put a three-year agreement together with the organizers. So we should uh, be down there for three years. That's exciting. It really is. And uh, it will be televised as well. That's what we're hearing. So my understanding is that we'll put pickleball on television for the first time, which obviously that'll be great for the game as well. Looking forward to that. I was wondering if there was any kind of 
I wouldn't say resentment, but uh, for a lot of years now, the West Coast has really been the home of the majors, uh, whether it's, you know, the Huntsman or uh, the Nationals. It seems like most of the major tournaments are on the West Coast. And I didn't know if there was any little, like, uh, I don't know, resentment is probably not the right word, but uh, if people were thinking, oh, you know, the East Coast, that's just not the place that a major tournament should be held. Do you get any kind of that sense from people, you know, not generally the people that you work with, but just some of the the local players in the you know in the Arizona West Coast area? I think what comes to my mind when I hear that is that uh, it'd be nice for the. East Coast players not to have to travel across the country uh, as often as they do. And let's see some other large events held on the uh, East side and and the West Coast folks travel over. So um, that's what I I see is like, let's spread the wealth, maybe is the term Mm -hmm. to use uh, to where not the same players are having to travel uh, all the time. I can imagine how how good it is going to feel in April for all the people down in the villages to be able to get in their car and really take a leisurely drive over to a major tournament. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. Don't have to pack up. Don't have to, you know, uh, connect in Atlanta or connect in Charlotte or any of that stuff. You can just, you know, hey, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over to Naples and uh, and play in a national, you know, a big major tournament. That'll be nice. Right. Well, it's exciting for the East Coast. I mean, we even so we're even seeing the USAPA um, who you know ran their ambassador retreat out west last year. You know, a lot of the folks who came and came from the East were like, you know, hey, let's if you're going to do it again, and we hope you do move it out east and so they were heard and it will be held out east um, in the middle of september this year at club med in florida boy you can just it seems like you can find really good competitive play just about everywhere you look well, one thing I'll say, uh, as we're noticing for the uh, registrations as they're coming in for the U.S. Open, we're seeing people sign up for the pro event that we've not even heard of before. Um, are they tennis so, players that are coming it, over? From what I can tell, yeah. And for the ones that I've talked to, there are tennis players that are coming in to, to play <laughs> and uh, are just getting involved in pickleball. I'm thinking of Wayne Mugley. Uh, he always calls it the dark side. I can, ima- I can see him right now going, yes, they're coming over to the dark side. that sounds like Wayne we've got the U.S. Open coming up and that is in April and then what other majors are we looking at in uh, 2016 uh, you also have the Grand Canyon State Games in February that are coming back this uh, this year you've got the duel in the desert happening in March that's coming back uh, there's an, a new tournament uh, called Spring Paddle on the Strip and Valleys in Las Vegas. So that's the first time we've seen the Strip in Vegas uh, have a tournament. That's going to happen in March. That's in March. Will it be indoors or outdoors? It'll be outdoors on the tennis courts there at Valleys. Okay. All of our regional tournaments, the USAPA regional tournaments are coming back this year. So very exciting. I already told you a little bit about the growth that we saw from the Southwest tournament. So I'm sure we'll see growth for the other regionals as well. Uh, you've got the Lemaster Davison Classic coming back in April. That's a prize money playing tournament. Uh, it pays prize money at each level, not just your open levels. Um, so that's something exciting that they do. There's a, a new tournament coming. I don't know if you've seen these courts, Chris, and maybe you have and you've even been down there, but in Hiawassee, Georgia. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Every time I see a picture of those courts, I think I get goosebumps. They have done a wonderful job. And uh, I know Rocket Grubbs took some video there. He was there a couple of months ago and uh, got up on the hilltop and and shot some really nice video that uh, showed the courts and all their splendor. And uh, they are really, really nice. Yes, really, really nice. And that setting next to the lake with the mountains in the background. I mean, it's just uh, another majestic place, uh, much like the courts are that are in Ogden, Utah, just majestic. So very excited. They're doing a spring classic tournament there in May. They're also doing a fall classic tournament there in September. The fall classic, uh, we will be there and um, running the operation for that. So my dream to visit Hiawassee, Georgia will come true in 2016. Finally. So excited. Bucket list. (laughs) Check mark. You're done. Exactly. (laughs) Nice job. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So very excited on that. You know, also coming back this year is the um, Tournament of Champions. 
people may or may not know, know, moved to Brigham City, Utah in 2015. It will be back in Brigham City, Utah in 2016. Great venue, great place to play a pickleball tournament. And uh, if anyone ever gets a chance, if it's on their bucket list uh, to come out and just to be a part of that, if not as a player, just to come out and watch the play. It, it's just unbelievable and um, privileged to be a part of that every year. Well, these major tournaments, they are so well run and people have experience year after year learning how to do them and do them the right way. What would somebody maybe, you know, they, they don't have a, a major to do, but they have their local club and they want to put on a tournament. What kind of things can they do to enter the tournament scene and, and just be part of this? Do you have any recommendations for that? If somebody wants to, you know, dip their toe in the water and be an organizer, is there something or, or some tips that you can give to help them along the way? Yeah, I think if they have the opportunity to go to other tournaments and see how they're doing, that's always something very good to do. So kind of do your research and homework. Uh, if you don't have that opportunity, then do, you know, your research just like you might do, you know, when you were back in school or something to see what all is involved in putting on a good tournament. Because it's the planning and the preparation that's so important to make sure you can have a successful event. So planning early, you know, understanding your goals and objectives uh, for the tournament and why you want to put it on. Yeah, obviously having a venue, you got to know, you got to have a venue, you got to know and understand your venue so that you can size your tournament correctly. Uh, you need to make decisions. Uh, are you going to sanction your tournament? Are you not going to sanction your tournament with the USAPA? And do you need tools to help you manage your tournament? Uh, you know, volunteers, no tournament runs without volunteers. So you got to yeah, understand sure. the needs for those. And then ultimately you need to set your dates. So there's a lot more involved that goes into putting a tournament, but I would say those are some very high level quick tips that people would need to consider to even get started. Any common pitfalls that you see over and over again? Probably the number one pitfall I see is a tournament director trying to be alt for everything and they don't delegate and as a result they are overworked, uh, things get overlooked and ultimately la it, it doesn't allow them to properly plan and then that rolls into the experience of the tournament not being positive for anyone involved. That's good advice. Year after year, this continued growth, Melissa and Greg, you, you have to give a, a big tip of the hat to all the ambassadors out there, all the USAPA ambassadors that have been doing so much at the grassroots level to grow this sport. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. The ambassadors continue to step up their game, uh, tirelessly working out there to give of their time and grow this sport. And then the volunteers that are supporting them in their roles. It's just uh, absolutely mind boggling. And, uh, and the commitment, and the passion to see that people put into this game, I think is just part of what makes us all want to be a part of it. It really is. And uh, so glad that, uh, that you guys are out there and uh, making it happen and making it so easy easy for everybody to not only enjoy attending tournaments, but to enjoy putting them on as well. Melissa, Greg, thank you so much. And we look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thank you, Chris. And I know we didn't get to cover everybody. So for those of you we missed, we're sorry. Um, but be sure to look out there on pickleballtournaments.com for tournaments in your area. That's the place. Greg, take care. I right, take care, man. Thanks, Chris. And I'd like to thank you for joining us today as well. And a big thank you to everybody who's been sharing sharing the link to the Pickleball Show via social media and just telling people in their local club about the show. We really, really do appreciate your support. Hey, have you gotten your copy of the top 10 tips from Pickleball's three greatest coaches? Coach Mo, Deb Harrison, Brame Carnot, all together in one quick study guide that will definitely take your game to the next level. It's totally free. You don't need a credit card. All you need is an email address. Just head over to freepbxclub.com. That's freepbxclub.com, and we'll send it right over to you. Head over to iTunes also if you get a chance. Hit that subscribe button. You'll never miss an episode. And if you feel it's appropriate, leave us a five-star review. I'm Chris Allen. This is The Pickleball Show. And until next week, keep them low. 
The Pickleball Show is brought to you by PBX Club. PBX stands for Pickleball Excellence. Join today and get the latest pickleball tips and strategies, news, and opinion. Save money on paddles and other equipment with coupon codes to online pickleball retailers. Get travel discounts to tournaments and a whole lot more. How much does it cost to become a PBX Club member? Well, it's free. Just go to freepbxclub.com. That's freepbxclub.com. There's even a link in the show notes for this episode. Free PBX Club. Dot com. PBX Pickleball Excellence. Join the club. It's free.